right, welcome back. So we've defined the hydrologic cycle. We've figured out where the water's at. And this, um, so this unit uh, is the focus of surface water. Next unit, the focus of groundwater. <clears throat> so let's dive into surface water a little bit, shall we? So surface water consists of broadly lakes, like the Great Lakes, swamps, which is kind of just stagnant still water, and streams. So let's, so lakes, kind of to the point, swamps, kind of to the point. Let's focus in on streams, because streams, moving water, generally has a bigger impact on geology and, and is generally shaped more by geology. So let's focus in on streams. So stream is any body of water that flows downslope uh, along a clearly defined natural passageway. Um, streams shape the Earth's surface. Again, lakes and swamps are more a byproduct of the Earth being shaped, but streams, that moving water, tends to shape Earth's surface, so it has more of a role in geology. There's actually different types of streams. Uh, we can break up streams into kind of three different categories. Rivers, which is a large natural stream, uh, which, also, which also may be a waterway for moving materials. So anyway, rivers are big. Then a little bit smaller, creek, it's a narrow stream, smaller than a river, sometimes navigable by small little motor boats, um, and may be intermittent, there may be water, there may not be. <clears throat> and then brooks, so that's the smallest, uh, so that's the stream that's smaller than a creek, usually small, shallow, easily crossed. So let me give you a, 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 a way to remember the difference between a river, creek, and brook. So here's a river. <laughs> a river, you cannot, that's too far, you could not jump across it, nor could you probably throw something across it. So rivers are tend to be kind of big. These are just in general. So you, you can't jump across it, and it's still too far to throw something across. Rivers are big streams. Creeks, you probably couldn't jump across it, still a little too wide, but you can definitely easily throw something over, throw a rock, throw a baseball, something easily over it. And a brook you could easily throw something over as well as jump over. So think about throwing and jumping. If you can do both, it's a brook. If you can throw but not jump, it's a creek. If you can do neither, it's probably a river. Just a general loose definition. In all cases, though, <coughs> the streams are confined to what's known as stream uh, channels. Um, and there are <coughs> excuse me, different types of stream channels. There's straight stream channels, braided stream channels, and meandering stream channels. Each of these, uh, geology plays a role in these, as well as the streams themselves kind of playing a role on geology. But let's define these different channels. So again, channels are the, the passageway through which a stream flow. It's the, it's the, you know, the, the, the riverbed, the, the channel, the, the, the wash, however you want to think it, the canyon, it's whatever a stream is flowing through uh, is called a stream channel, clear defined passageway. So straight stream channels have a high gradient, meaning straight stream channels that are, for the most part, pretty much straight, are found in areas that are very steep, high gradient, steep areas. These typically occur towards the heads of streams up in mountainous areas, so where streams form uh, up in mountains as snow melts, you know, typically mountains are very steep, so the water moves very fast and creates, for the most part, a very straight stream channel. Uh, rapids. And waterfalls are very common along straight stream channels. Not, they can't only be in straight stream channels, but very common. And straight stream channels, because they're moving so fast, they tend to carve um, V-shaped valleys or canyons. For example, uh, this is in Yellowstone Park. Um, you can see uh, this is, for the most part, a straight stream channel. Uh, again, it's not perfectly straight, but for the most part, it's linear. It's straight, and it's kind of in this V-shaped canyon. And you can see how deep this canyon is compared to the size of some of these large trees that are sitting there. <clears throat> Another famous V-shaped canyon, canyons caused by a, a river that is, a, for the most part, a straight stream channel is the Colorado River down at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. A nice V-shape. <clears throat> that's indicative of a canyon that's been carved by flowing water by a stream. So you, there's also U-shaped canyons, and that's 
a little bit different process. More on that in a later unit. But straight stream channels, high gradient, usually up near the head lens of where the uh, water begins, where the stream begins. Rapids and falls common can be in canyons, these V-shaped canyons. Then we get into braided stream channels. These typically have a low gradient, so they're not so steep. And it's off, there are often multiple smaller channels splitting and recombining to form, to form a braided stream channel. <clears throat> These are typically near sediment sources, areas such as the bottoms of, of mountains as you're coming out or in front of glaciers, places where there's a, a large amount and variable load of sediment being deposited. So at the base of a mountain where material is weathering and eroded, it can come down and create this large sediment field and as water flows through that creates braided stream channels. Or again, at the end of glaciers which are also dumping a bunch of sediment and as glacier material is melted, making its way through that um, loose sediment field creates these braided stream channels. So here you can see at the uh, end of glaciers, you can see this large field of, of sediment that gets deposited and then gets taken along basically throughout this whole valley as streams flow off it. You can see how these are all braided together. Here's another example at the base of some, some mountains. There might be some glaciers way back behind the clouds, but at the base of these mountains, a lot of sediment being deposited in water needs to find its way through there, creating these braided stream channels. And then we get to the type of stream channel that most people think about when they think about streams, and that's a meandering stream channel. Also very low gradient, but it's a single channel that kind of just curves back and forth. It's very characteristic of lowlands, away from mountains, away from canyons, tending to be away from large sediment sources. So far away from the beginnings of, typically, of where the river or stream starts. But the name of this stream channel, get, well, the, the stream channel gets this name because they, the stream channel itself moves, meanders, over time. Where it once, where the river path once was, a million years from now, it will not be. Or even thousands or even hundreds of years in some cases, these stream channels can move, meander. <clears throat> Me uh, stream channels tend to, oh, excuse me, meandering stream channels tend to form different land features um, like floodplains, oxbow lakes, and they tend to flood regularly because it's very low gradient, very high volume of water. So if you get a lot uh, of a, uh, additional added water from precipitation, these tend to flood. And since they're in these flat areas, that water really, really spreads out. So many of Earth's longest rivers are in meandering stream channels. For example, here's a meandering stream channel. This kind of meanders back and forth, back and forth. And you can see where it once was as an example in this oxbow lake. So an oxbow lake is a cutoff meander. Water will always wants to find the shortest route possible. So it looks like this river kind of flowed this way. And at one point, it flowed around this oxbow and back. But water wants to find the shortest path possible, so instead of taking that additional loop, the water just said, you know what, we're going to bypass that, and weathered and eroded through the banks to create just this cut-off meander, now filled with water, called an oxbow. You can see another one here, and another one here, and another one here. <clears throat> Over here, you see a very extensive floodplain. A floodplain is the area uh, adjacent to a, a river on either side that could flood. Oftentimes, because these meandering stream channels flood, they create very nutrient-rich soil. So oftentimes you see a lot of farming uh, on floodplains next to meandering rivers. Uh, it's not just for the water source, but it's also because the, those, that periodic flooding enriches the soil. It might harm the crop that season, but it will enrich the soil for decades to come. So this area, again, adjacent to the, to the stream is known as a floodplain. More on that in just a second. But what you see here, as this river kind of, kind of moves all around here, it looks like in, at some point, this the river will, instead of eating into this bank, it will actually, well, it will continue to eat into this bank and then eventually weather and erode straight through, and all of this will be a cutoff meander, turning it into an oxbow lake. 
because again, water wants to take the shortest route possible. <clears throat> so uh, again, just really briefly touching on floodplains, it's a flat or, or nearly flat land adjacent next to a stream, typically a river, that experiences occasional flooding. It stretches from the banks of the stream channel on one side to the base of the enclosing um, valley walls on either side. So from the bank to the valley wall, or the enclosing wall, from the bank all the way over. And again, that, that area could potentially flood. Not that it does a lot, but at its maximum, that whole area could flood, hence the term floodplain. And again, the soils here, um, usually consist of clay, silts, and sand, a good mixture of stuff deposited uh, during floods, which actually creates great farming soil full of nutrients, perfect for growing. <clears throat> so the type of stream channel, how it's created, and the landforms that are created from said streams are influenced by gradient, so the steepness of a stream channel. Discharge, how much water is flowing in that channel, how much volume more volume, more discharge, less volume, less discharge. And the load. The load is all the other material that's in the water other than just the water. There's bed load, large dense sediment that moves along the bottom of that channel bed. There's suspended load, small sediment suspended in the flowing water. That's why some rivers look kind of like brown muddy because that's the sediment suspended excuse me, in the water itself. And then dissolved sediment, which is the sum of all ions and little molecules in solution from chemical weather. So, depending on the gradient, how steep it is, the discharge, how much water is flowing through the channel, and the load, what kind of material is in the water other than just the water, will help to determine the stream channel that we may see. So, for instance, high gradient, uh, so very steep, so low discharge, small volume, Low load, mostly water, typically get straight stream channels. Lower gradient, high discharge, a lot of water, and high suspended load, so that's water, or that's uh, uh, sediment in the water itself, you get meandering streams. And then also low gradient, discharge variable, high and low, just depends, but uh, the load is high, more bed load, more bigger material, then more likely you're looking at a braided stream channel. And then streams also go through stages. And ge uh, geologists characterize uh, streams as either youthful, mature, uh, and or old. So a youthful stream is typically one that has a steep gradient, generally flows in a V-shaped valley, high velocity, little to no floodplain, might have rapids and waterfalls. So this is still developing, it still hasn't ground down and weathered down the area to create a floodplain to meander. So that's typical of a, a youthful stream, a newer stream. A mature stream is uh, kind of a moderate gra gradient and velocity, so medium speed and slope, uh, carving out a valley floor. So it starts to kind of give you a little bit of a valley floor. Uh, it's not confined to just a V-shaped channel. You do get periodic flooding in a very small floodplain. And then old streams where the gradient and velocity are very low, so not very steep, very slow moving, uh, deposits uh, as much material as it erodes, meanders greatly, very wide, well-developed floodplain marked with oxbow lakes. And you can kind of see the images here, youthful, uh, mature, and old and also the, the cross-section. So let's go ahead and pause here. When we come back, we'll talk about, well, where does all this water in a stream come from? So let's pause here, and I'll see you back here in just a second. <laughs> 